I like to think I blur the boundaries between stand-up and theatre. When I was at school, I was always the class clown, uh, always making fun of the teachers and whatnot, making people laugh, and you know, I got into trouble a bit, but it was later on in life when I realised, you know, that's a skill, I can use that, and I think um, kids of today should realise that, get, get into drama, uh, because this country's got a, you know, a really big scene happening, you know, with drama, film, live stand-up, I think is huge at the moment, and uh, it's explosive and I think uh, we need to nurture that. Uh, the Billy T Awards is a big thing for me. It's something I've been sort of working on in the last couple of years. Uh, or <laughs> the other nominees this year. Um, couldn't meet a better bunch of guys. You know, they're all good friends of mine and we've done shows together. We all have a great lark and I'm sure this year it's gonna be the best show ever. I'd like you to welcome to the stage a man with a rubber face and teeth to match. The very wonderful Mr. Reese Darby. Give him a huge welcome. The year after the Space Odyssey. We're in the future now. This is the future. This is it. In here. Crazy. <laughs> we'll get on. All right. <laughs> you know, I think Kiwis are in the forefront of technology. We've got it going on. These days, every man and his dog's got a cell phone. Come on, come here, boy. Come on, come on. Get the stick. <laughs> Hello. Oh, good boy. Bring it back. <laughs> You know, with the, uh, the success we have in technology here, of course, with the Lord of the Rings and whatnot. That's the third instalment. No, the, the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> of course, the Weta Workshop in Wellington. They, uh, they got all the, a few Oscars there, I think three. Uh, of course, what you don't know is the first thing they come up with, the old Weta, was they made the original giant Santa that sits outside Whitkill's. <laughs> that was their first project. <laughs> I mean, if you want someone to come towards you, who goes, come here, mate? <laughs> and what's your, what, this must be scaring kids at Christmas time. Come here. Come on, come here. Plenty of things in my sacks for you, mate. Go on. So the first toy I always wanted as a kid was uh, the action man. And, well, I came from a sort of a, a poor upbringing and, well, we could never afford the real action man. I, I ended up with the no-frills version. Brought from Woolworths. It was called Johnny War. It was nothing like the actual action man. It, it didn't have the real hair. It didn't have the action eyes. <laughs> remember those? It didn't have the gripping hands. Remember the gripping hands? Remember the gripping hands? Woo! Yeah, get out of my <laughs> Not mine. Couldn't even hold a gun, mine. Obvious disadvantage in the battlefield. <laughs> Don't shoot! I'm fucked! <laughs> few advantages though. It was inflatable and life-size. It had a mouth like this. <laughs> Didn't know why until one night I saw my granddad with it. <laughs> I'm just cleaning it. <laughs> now uh, of course back in Christchurch or Chicha, I had a bit of trouble there. <laughs> I didn't get on with too many girls, you know, as you can imagine. Um, I'll laugh it up. Popular now. But back then, back then, of course, I had a bit of trouble. And when I was a young teenager, I wanted to feel the, feel the sexual touch, you know, give it a go. I was like, ah, honey. But I couldn't. So um, I eventually, you know, I was not, I'm not, uh, not proud of this, but I did go to a brothel. I wanted to figure it out, you know, and easy to find. Just look for a dodgy looking doorway with stairs going up. <laughs> and I thought to myself, why are they always on the second floor? I reckon by the time I get up there, I'd be knackered. <sighs> Can I help you? Oh, no, thanks. I'm fucked already. <laughs> And if you do, if you do make it up the stairs, what do you say to the woman? Hi, can I help you? Oh, yes, uh, I'll have the, um... There, um... <laughs> I'll go for the route, thanks. <laughs> now, the one I did go to, funnily enough, was a, a theme brothel. Okay, so they had all these different sexual theme rooms. You could have any sort of fantasy you like. And they gave me a pamphlet. Oh, cheers, mate. 
looked through it, and there was everything from underwater adventure to desert safari. And now I ended up going with space travel. I can I go with that one, thanks. Looks quite good there. But if, and she goes, oh, good choice. What's your name? I'll punch you into the computer. Oh, Darby. Okay. Okay. Good. That's uh, room 13. Go down the corridor. All right. Cheers. Enjoy your sex. <laughs> Uh, 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 mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> ah, here we are. Room 13. <clears throat> Darby for space travel. <laughs> Darby for space travel. <laughs> Come in, Captain Doobie. We've been expecting you. <laughs> Quick, Captain Doobie, put on your space suit. That's Darby. What's the go? Quiet. Step into your spaceship. Would you like your own space theme tune once you reach orbit? Yeah, all right, check. Good. Three, two, one, blast off. There he goes. Captain Doobie, he's into space now. Captain Doobie, he's into space. Ah! Asteroids. What? Are you in orbit yet? I don't know, I can't see anything. Put 20 cents in. Oh, yes, there I am. Okay, land on planet 457. <laughs> 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 All I wanted was a root. on this planet for 10 years without sex. Really? <laughs> no, but I'm due in the Battle of Britain theme room in five minutes, so hurry up and fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Dewey, he's in the space now. Woo! <laughs> whip, whip, whip. All ships in, please. <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I'm coming home. Thanks very much. Good night. Coming up.